Hey guys, I'm Sai Hakai. Uh, just before we get into this tutorial, I just wanted to bring up why I think this video would be a better tool for you than uh, learning from people like Lyric and and Stormin for jump heads, especially. And um, I can't, uh, I can't exactly say Moki Sniper because he is a better teacher overall, but um, there's just a couple things he couldn't get uh, every detail of because he just gives you the facts. He can't give you like, oh, what is a physical thing that you have to do with your mouse or your or your or your hands, you know, to, to make it easier to do um, a certain movement tech. So it, those are things that I, I cover It's even the tiniest thing that could be messing you up in your movement. Hey, so before we get into the video, um, there's just a couple things you need to understand. Uh, one of which is yes, it's a long video, but it's supposed to encompass all of the movement that you need to need to know. So of course it's going to be a long video, but, um, I, I need everyone to understand to not watch this all the way through. Uh, it, it's not meant for you to understand it just by watching and then doing, uh, it, it take each part takes about 20 hours of play time before you can have a general understanding of how to use it in every game. So uh, it, it's just meant for you to learn from part to part to part. Uh, no one should be sitting through an hour plus of movement tutorial stuff and then going out and doing it just cause. So uh, just take it slow. You, ne you need to give your brain time to understand what you're, what you're doing. So from your brain to your actual doing, you need to need to give it time you need to give it practice repetition is how you actually learn so yeah uh just come back when when you've learned one part and then do the next so yeah just so people aren't frustrated with why can't i learn it why can't why can't i do it because you're not giving yourself time so yeah now on to the video okay so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with um what are the things that are required for you to do pretty much all of these movements the main and pretty much the only two that i feel are required if not um make it easier especially is um you can you can do either scroll wheel up or scroll wheel down for either of these but for me i do move forward with scroll wheel down and jump uh with scroll wheel up um, now the reason why I personally do this and a lot of pros, I know, um, I know a lot of pros don't do this. So they usually have the, uh, the opposite, but the reason why I do it is because scroll wheel, uh, up makes me think of jumping, just jumping. Boom, 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 boom. Cool. It is going upwards. The reason why going forwards is scroll wheel down. Isn't just because that's what's left. It's because when I feel like I'm going forward, I feel like, especially with tap strafing, I'll be pulling myself forward. So down, I'd be pulling myself that way. I'd be, but it's like in like a small finger version where I'm pulling myself forward. That's just how my mind works. You could pick it however you want, but those, those are definitely ones we're going to be using, uh, that will help you in the long run. So just as a interesting tip before we get into any movement, um, something that I would say would be, uh, you need to have in the back of your mind, um, and just have it be a subconscious thought, uh, whenever you're, you're moving around the map is you want to add diagonal movements when going around corners, because it can end up keeping your momentum, um, rather than just running and looking in that direction, it can kind of mess up a couple things, especially if you're wanting to slide. 
and get into uh, other things is you can really get some control after a slide tab strafe. So doing these diagonal movements around walls and around um, doors can really help in the long run. So you know that you need to um, use the diagonal movements to go around corners or doors or something like that. That helps a lot too, but it also helps to know how long you need to be running before you can slide jump. Um, normally you'll get the feel for it, but there is a, li a limit to how much you can do because it just ends up looking janky and actually it doesn't um, shorten your hitbox at all. Your head is still like really up there and you're not ducking all that all that much down. Um, in, you can see it in the third person, but it, it really looks ridiculous and it doesn't help you at all. It doesn't even help you keep momentum, but um, you'll get a feel for how long you need to be sliding. Uh, but give it time. Don't rush it. Don't spam it. You'll get a lot of these dead slides, which is this. Where you don't get anywhere. Give it some time. And you can end up just doing a perfect slide. And if you're just going around the map, it's not a big deal. You don't need to be slide jumping constantly. But it does get you places faster. Along with keeping your gun holstered. Um, because you don't want to, even within fights, you want to holster your gun, run, un unsheath it. You want to get used to, um, playing out your gun rather than, uh, always having your gun out and running around. Like if you know they're close, of course you don't want to pull, you don't want to put away your gun. But if you're actually meaning to run and get somewhere fast, just put your gun away so you could get that momentum a lot faster. Okay, enough with the tips. We're gonna actually get into the movement tech. Okay, so now you know your, your binds for your scroll wheel. Uh, so let me just explain how I'm gonna structure the video. I'm gonna structure it with exactly what kind of inputs you're going to be using in order to achieve that movement tech. And then after that, I'm gonna tell you what you, how you can use it in game and how you can use, uh, use it more consistently. Whether it's uh, something physical with your mouse or your, your keyboard hand or if it's another input thing uh, that you might be doing wrong that you may be able to fix. So uh, first off, we're going to jump into bunny hopping. It's not, it's not that funny. It's not that funny. Essentially, what you want to do is you, you're going to have enough momentum. You're going to stay crouched and you're going to jump over and over and over. Now, um, what I'm doing is I'm just using the space bar. And it's really hard to time. It's not really all that great, right? This is why I, I had you a scroll, use a scroll wheel to to jump. That way it'll be much easier and you don't have to struggle with timing um, the jump. Because essentially what it's doing is it's, forced, it's making it so you, there's no possible way you can miss a jump at all i mean you still want to space it out so you're not over jumping you see how i'm killing my momentum yeah i did go over some rocks but it's, uh, uh, it would have uh dwindled down um just as long as i kept going straight so that's how you uh, just do it on base level the way you can keep your momentum is by alternating by looking left and turning left looking right and turning right so essentially it'll look like this you want to do it slowly that way um, you don't kill your momentum trying to do it too fast because doing it too fast can either make it so you can't possibly keep your momentum See, it'll cut me off right there I'll be trying to turn left and then I'll try and turn right and I'll be cut off But if I did it slowly and alternated, I could keep it. Even going uphill, you can kind of keep it. Not recommend it, but you can. So there's a little bit of confusion when they're when people are talking about uh, bunny hopping. It, when when alternating left and right, they tell you to not hold W. But uh, the entire time, I have been using it. And it really doesn't kill my momentum like they all suggest. 
most momentum that is lost is within your own uh, fault rather than um, adding the W. Whether you're turning too far, whether you're um, miss using the um, scroll wheel jump, it can just ruin your day when it comes to bunny hopping specifically. So whatever, regardless of what everyone says, W does not hurt your bunny hopping capabilities. Now, something I'll be teaching later is tab strafing. And there is a use for it uh, with bunny hopping, but it is not something you should be doing all the time. Um, because I don't bunny hop to go long distance, I pretty much, um, if you could see my input, because I will be using both the jump and the down. So for short distance, tap strafe uh, jumping is still, it's okay. If you don't plan on using bunny, uh, bunny hopping uh, too much, it is totally okay to do if you don't have enough space to turn into it with the bunny hop you know up, 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 up. Uh, and you need to make a little quick uh edit you can uh you can use tap strafe so pretty much just know that tap strafing can uh kill your moment and tim especially taking those sharp corners So as an added bonus, um, when trying to do a backwards uh, bunny hop, you want to do the opposite uh, way you're you're going direction wise, but you'll still hit left and right uh, input A and D. So if I want to go right, I'll hit D and look left. If I want to go left, I'll hit A and look right slowly, of course. And we will also be talking about looking in the opposite direction in momentum shifting, which is the next topic. Yeah, I use backwards bunny hopping way more than I do uh, forward bunny hopping. I find it super useful. Just something that was really overpowered about bunny hopping, bunny hop healing was you were running away while healing. Now that is out of this game and I won't be talking about it because it's kind of sad. The only time you can is um, while healing. Uh, or while well, stemmed as octane okay next up is momentum shifting this is yet another um easy tech that uh is basic for your fundamentals and it'll actually add more to the more difficult um uh tech later in the video okay so how to do it i'm gonna do it slow and then i'm gonna show you in real time so get your momentum you'll hit crouch and then when you uh when you need to you'll hit jump and in the air you will hit asd and you'll be looking in the opposite direction so since we're going left i'm going to be looking right and do asd okay so in real time essentially what it's going to do is that it's going to put me in this nook and cranny it's going to snug me like a bug right in here and if you're going in the opposite direction, um, you'll do DSA. Which is great for a couple of reasons. Yes, yeah, so you'll do the opposite uh, direction inputs as well as the opposite um, looking direction. So when uh, you're in the air, A moves you further in. S, since you're, since you're still moving, uh, keeps you in here and D snugs you in right into the corner. So, uh, here, the reason why I call it a fundamental movement is because you will be using this in everything you do. Uh, that might be an over exaggeration, but I want you to understand that it is pretty much something that should be in the back of your head along with bunny hopping. And, uh, but before I explain that, um, one really good thing that it's pretty much used for is well, when trying to get into cover and you see somebody you can keep the line of sight for that shooting as you're getting into cover so let's say you see somebody well you'll have better shots for sure but yeah 
and because they can't react whether, whether they notice you or not you are shooting at them you're doing damage while getting into cover which so that's just one example of what why um it is a fundamental movement but um if i wanted to paint a bigger picture anything to do with you in the air um you have way more control than any other game uh for i typically use it as a stop it's basically my brakes let's say you're 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 running and you realize oh i don't want to go there asd and you just stop pretty much right where you are it is the best brakes you could ever have in a game and it is also a really good um i want to say offense uh only because you don't have to tap strafe which i'll be talking about later um there's actually a pro who doesn't tap strafe and instead he just uses momentum shift to get closer to an enemy you do break line of sight if you do that but uh for him it, it seems to work really well yes it is great for trying to get away and you can even as always you can add it with bunny hopping just also why i like backwards bunny hopping so much because after a momentum shift you can just bunny hop away which is really cool and really fun and later in the video i well, when i talk about super gliding it is also really good for both super gliding and tap strafing like i said it's fundamental because you can use it on top of everything else you can do it's something that should really just be back back here should be subconscious shouldn't even have to think about it and then as an added bonus just like the uh backwards bunny hop um uh, so for the momentum shift uh there is something they do a, a lot in uh the asian region um and that is there's a momentum shift uh within close range especially it's it's beloved and uh with gibby's shield is when they like using it most where is he there he is so basically they'll throw it out and they'll be on the edge of it and instead of just strafing let, let's say let's say it's right here right let's say the things right here and the enemy is right here and i'm instead of just strafing back and forth what i'm gonna do is i'll already have uh, mo uh, a lot of momentum coming uh into my left so d i'll jump i'll move forward that's the only difference so w a s w a s w a s what it's gonna do is it'll push me forward and back into the left uh, since you can't really just jump left and jump right because just adding a jump is still pretty slow but having that momentum and you can add a slide on top of it so a lot of people like to add a slide i'm not i don't use it super often uh but i do it is i do think that you should be learning it now okay so now we're going to be moving on to tap strafing now i'm bringing it up now instead of later that way uh i don't have to keep pushing it off and having having to say when you learn it this happens that way you know and you can move on and we can kind of flow into the rest of the movement tech okay okay so the input is very simple but i will explain a little slower that way everyone can understand so you do need some momentum any momentum it could be even from a slide but um we're just gonna do it from a normal run okay so all it takes is a run so momentum so it takes momentum and you need to be in the air you don't the slide is all is just to make it more optimal sharper turns more distance okay i i'll show you what i mean in a second um but all it all it really takes is momentum and you to be in the air the reason why i specify that is because you can even use tab strafing to turn around and not lose your momentum you can literally just be walking or just be sprinting and you don't even need to go that far it's great for when you just need to edit what you're doing just a little bit you don't want to be shot at okay cool just just a little whoop okay so with the slide um it adds the momentum and the distance for you 
So essentially it's going to look like this. I'll be uh, at, right, right after my jump. I'll look in the direction and I'll tap strafe. For me, it's scroll down. So I'll do a slide jump, look left and tap strafe. I wouldn't have been able to do that angle just by using my left input here. It would be either really small or just not at all. It's pretty much dead. But with a tap strafe, you get all the distance you need and more. All within literally a fingertip. Now, I feel that this should be considered a fundamental movement um, because of how easy it is to access on top of it being um, pretty much used like momentum shifting. Momentum shifting is still required. It's still pretty much something you need to know. But tap strafing, it's not just an alternative. It is a, it does more. And then momentum shifts can add even on top of tap strafing. They pretty much are combos. Like in a video game, if you think about it. I don't like my idea of momentum shift into that, into a uh, bunny hop. A backwards bunny hop. And you can just keep adding things to it. Tap shift can pretty much be added to anything. Like I said, even walking and tap shift backwards. That way you don't lose any momentum. Momentum is very key in Apex when it comes to movement. The more we get into the video, the more you'll understand why I consider it a fundamental movement. Everything from wall jumping to super gliding to momentum shifting. Uh, that's more of a combo rather than on top of it, but the idea is that you can pretty much use it for everything in this game. Okay, so I taught you how to do a regular tap strafe. Now you can do anything from 80 degrees to a little bit. And you can do it all the way to a lot, which is a 180. Now anything that goes past 90, even slightly, you need to add an input of the direction you're going to. So if I'm trying to do a uh, left, uh, I do a and, and turn left to do that 180 degree left way or same thing with the right. Now you can trick people into going off a building. You're let's say you're on the roof and someone's with you and uh, they're chasing you. You can pretty much 180 back on and trick them into jumping off or even just for a little bit. Um, have them shoot away from you. It really does trick people. So basically uh, anything past 90 degrees, you add that input and turn and tap strafe. So starting now, um, I'm going to be mentioning uh, mouse, uh, mouse timing along with longer strides compared to shorter strides on the uh, mouse wheel. If you're having trouble with pretty much any, any movement, it's best to just slow, slow it down both with the actual movement inputs and with um trying to do it and there's a uh the more you use it the more you'll get creative a lot of tricks are pretty much uh just to trick your opponent let's say you're running at them and you want to do a 90 degree or even just a little bit past that to get make it look like uh, you went past them when really you're still in front of them and you start shooting it tricks them a lot if you can get if you get if you actually physically get past them you can tap strafe directly backwards and trick them into thinking that you're still behind them which is fantastic there are people that uh even go fully around the whole person and getting you know they'll fix their sight back on and they don't know where you are and they'll just freak out and try shooting you so uh i do want you to get as creative as you can when it comes to tricking opponents, they go for great clips and they go for um, just overall not getting shot in a close up fight. It is a lot harder, um, but if you are forced into an up close fight, it's definitely something you need to, uh, to keep in mind. So along with being more creative, um, it that does include with being more creative with um, how you are. If you're being shot at even from a distance or up close, 
never move in a straight line it's never smart it's the most predictable you could ever get and it's super easy to laser somebody who's just walking straight so around the map if you just want to catch for just a little bit like i do uh i do this a lot just so i'm not um super easy to hit even if just slightly is as you're slide jumping around the map just tap strafe tap strafe tap strafe a little bit over a rock that kind of stuff okay so earlier um i mentioned that there's a better version of the momentum shift uh also uh, i kind of want to call it the asian momentum shift just because they made it popular but um that right there there's a more intense version with the tap strafe um so i would think i would name it the asian momentum tap strafe but essentially what you want to do is um you give it a couple steps whether it's walking or sprinting you jump you look in the direction you want and tap strafe the fact that i do add a s and d to adjust everything when i'm in the air and i'm tap strafing and everything they're just minor adjustments uh the more you do it uh the more you'll understand how that um interacts with it it's a little bit straightforward too you know as helps it get that good diagonal uh, same with s and d um and using all of them can help me go straight back and that's something um i really uh, don't suggest you do it but if there's cover behind you you know straight back straight back no, it's a good it's a good last minute adjustment to that um to the to the trick to the maneuver that's where the momentum comes in uh the momentum shift i should say the momentum comes from the little bit of walking you do and you can still you can still do the other one where you know you do it from you, your momentum is from the d or the a right the left and right input but instead you add a tap strafe so when you jump you can add a little bit of that i just think that it's better to do a little bit of forward i think it adds a lot more okay you're potentially doing three things all at once you're keeping your line of sight you're dodging bullets or or, or you're at least making it harder for them to shoot at you and the third thing it would be the maybe case which is getting behind cover so yeah you have a clear line of sight and everything Okay, so now we're on to wall jumps. And of course, I'm gonna go from easiest to hardest type of wall jump. And um, I know there's going to be some hard parts to these, especially for the harder ones. Um, so I'm gonna tell you how to make it easier and maybe what you're doing wrong. Okay, starting off with the easiest with a simple wall jump just, just right in front of you. And this is just so we understand the secret formula to it uh, and how you can add other things to it to make it even more complicated and even more diverse uh, into the wall jumping world. Um, and so uh, the, the secret ingredients basically is all you need is, is momentum to be in the air, momentum towards it, and then a jump after that. Okay, so those, those are the key components. Now, um, if we're doing a straightforward one, because we want the most momentum and the most distance and all that we're going to add a slide jump you want to run towards it for the momentum slide jump into it and then after that you, you jump after you hit the wall okay it'll look like that and you can look at my my uh my key my keyboard one more time and by the way uh to make the jump the best at the very highest point of your jump should hit the wall so if you know how to time to get to your to your highest point do that it'll get you the most height so once you know you can consistently hit that we're going to go for a diagonal okay now this is going to be a little bit trickier uh there's only one thing different about it so you'll run you'll slide jump and but when you hit the wall you don't keep looking at, uh, you know, the way you, you've been looking. You have to look parallel to the wall. So here's the wall. Here's your line of sight. 
right on it. You have to look parallel to it. So when you do that, now you can jump. Now you can jump after that. And it'll give you that nice V shape. Looks pretty nice. And the sharper it is, the sharper it'll be on the other end. Uh, without tap strafing though, uh, that, that, that's how it's going to look. So now on to uh, by far the best wall jump. And that is the tap strafe wall jump. Um, and basically all you need to do, since we already discussed tap strafing, it shouldn't be a problem for you, is the momentum. So going forward, you'll slide jump like usual. But after that jump, you'll tap strafe parallel to the wall and jump off it. Okay, so it should look something like this. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Momentum, slide jump, tap strafe, wall jump. Now, once you have that down, what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you tap strafe one more time. Because you're forced to take this V formation still, um, and, and you wanna just keep going forward, is tap strafe right after it. You're just gonna tap straight forward right after it. And you can add a slide, of course. And bunny hop. To your heart's content. So there's another way to keep going straight. Um, you don't need to tap straight. You can um, hold the direction towards the wall. It doesn't get you as far. And um, to me, it doesn't feel as comfortable. But it feels, if it feels comfortable for you, go for it. But adding that extra input doesn't seem super worth it. So let's say tap strafe and I have to use a, I don't think it gets me as far. So see how floaty that seemed. If you want to be a little floaty, maybe that is the way to go. But if you're just trying to get away, tap strafing away on that second half as well. So tap strafe towards the wall, wall jump, tap strafe again one more time is the most optimal wall jump you can do. But it does, uh, the momentum shifting that we've all been talking about um, does happen after the wall jump, of course, as well. And in fact, you can add A and, uh, A and D to help a direction with your tap strafe wall jumping, which we will get into the next part here. So let's, let's just hop into that since I've already mentioned it. So that momentum shift is now going to come into play here with a wall jump 180. And there are two names uh, a lot of people get mixed up. There's wall jump 180 and a 180 uh, wall jump. They're two different things and I'll get into that after this one. So first we're going to get into this wall jump 180. The reason why wall jump is first because it, it comes first is the wall jump comes first and then the 180 does. So basically we're going to do a momentum shift by just holding a looking in the direction, the same direction as you're pressing. And throughout the entire time that you're looking this way is you'll do a, the entire scroll through. Now, again, this is going to be the timing problem that some people might have. So this 180 is going to help you juke an enemy if they're chasing you and you'll just jump over their heads and you'll turn around and get around them. Last minute juke before shooting them in the back. Okay. The next part of this, which is the reverse of the name, um, which is a 180 degree wall jump because the 180 degree tap strafe comes first and then the wall jump. So essentially this side right here is what we're going to be jumping on. It'll be, uh, let's say the corner of a building and you're coming from this, 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 this whole thing is a wall here and you're coming from here and you want to wall jump from the, uh, the building that you just passed. Okay. This is great. Pretty much anywhere. It just gives you that extra oomph to doing so. That's what it should look like. So unlike most 180 degree 
turns is you're not going to be using a and d that can actually get you to the wall faster than you want it to because it's so close to you it's just a long scroll like we've been talking about long scrolls so it, it'll it'll mess you up if you do use a and d um just because you're already kind of close to it and it can it can stop you in your track so you watch kind of just clung there it can kind of just like yeah it works but um when i was first doing it it just really messed it up so i i suggest that you don't use a and d um for doing a 180 degree wall jump so basically what you want to do is i want to say you want to time the jump to when you're um next to the building itself okay because uh if you go before it or after it it's too late you can't tap strafe as hard anymore and it can get quite difficult if you do it now the reason why i say it have to they have to be long strides with it is because if you don't they they don't become sharp enough the longer the scroll the sharper the turn okay so next up is the short wall jump now the jump itself isn't short it's the wall itself because most times you'll jump on a on a big wall Oops, but um mind. when you jump on a small wall you can notice that it just really keeps you there it just clings way too bad it just it's they're super clingy it, it's, it's really bad and it can kill all of your momentum so the trick it um what we do is we add an extra input we are going to add the left and right input now depending on where you're going you're going to add d or a so since i'm uh jumping on a a wall from my left and still wanting to go this way since i have to look at the wall well we're going to add d okay so we're going to add the right input um to do the short wall jump in this direction and it's going to look a lot smoother it's going to look a lot smoother And like before we're gonna we're basically doing what we did last time with the tap strafe wall jump tap strafe okay and we're gonna do the same for the opposite we're gonna use the a for our left input if it's on our right side now what makes this really tricky is when you're going towards it it has to be right before you um hit the wall or right before your jump even so the, cl the closest you can get to it and then jump you don't want to be holding it for too long because it'll end up looking like this where you can you don't even touch the wall you're just so caught up in holding the input that you miss the wall completely essentially what we want to do is we just want to tap it the closest we can to the wall after the tap strafe and this can help you in all kinds of ways let's say you have cover you do you do a little bit of diagonal movement into a tiny wall jump uh, with that task race, of course. So about the hardest um, wall jump you could do with a short with a short wall jump would be doing it around a full corner, which is something that is still difficult to me even now, especially if you just woke up or you haven't played today or you haven't played in a while and you just need a little warm up. Um, and speaking of that, uh that'll go into part two i do have a part two maybe this video is long maybe it's not but um part two is every every major thing that i teach here put into practice especially here in the firing range so you don't need to actually do it uh in game and waste your kd or whatever you're worried about it'll give you all the tools to perfect the movement tech that you'll be learning in this video and it'll pop up right above me and also at the end of the video and in the bio and in a pinned comment just so you guys know where to find it it will be pretty much everywhere okay so that's all the the wall jump techniques uh now i'm just going to kind of dive into what to use for specifically and how to make it easier so i know i would i said i would be talking about what uses uh each wall jump is for but there's really no cut and dry answer it's really just be creative it, it's giving yourself no excuse for being shot at you really shouldn't uh, be beating yourself up over it if you are but 
and having all of these different kinds of wall jumps in your arsenal really gives you way more um options than most people even need and as an added bonus wall jump um it's kind of a wall jump not really but uh, i'm gonna bunch it in with wall jumping and that is tap strafing towards the wall jumping and then tap strafing again to pick your direction and slide and this is kind of what it looks like now normally without the tap strafe on the second one it'll just send you back behind cover but um, adding that that tap strafe gives you the direction you want if you don't have enough momentum it's great to use it'll give you a slide it'll give you a direction uh, and it can stop people from shooting at you directly movement is all about misdirecting kind of a big old magic trick magic trick being uh, now you see me now you don't to their bullets okay so now on to the things that might be tripping you up and things you need to note is uh again had the speed at which you're turning your mouse with your scroll as well longer scrolls is better give you those sharp sharp turns see that was more than 90 and i didn't even need to use a or d it is better too especially if you're doing a 180 but for not doing an a or d d movement that got me pretty far just with uh a longer stride on the on the tap strafe and one big thing that a lot of people mess up on isn't that alone it's also how long they stare at this wall some people they'll they won't get very far with um like flicking the mouse like way way too fast away from the wall itself and that can really trip someone up the slower you are the the more accurate i'm gonna say you're gonna be but if you're used to it you can easily just it looks so clean and a lot of pros look so clean and doing that and so a lot of people like to replicate that speed and it's just not good to do if you can't do it in the first place so i would give yourself some time both on the wall looking at it and on the jump you're in no rush to get off that that wall not really anyways there there's obviously a time on it kind of thing but you really have more time than you think so just keep that in mind if you're having any trouble with wall jumping but basically just really focus on slowing down your timing for your mouse and your scroll time which means you might have to extend your fingers farther than you really are comfortable with to get used to doing those long strides okay now we're on the easiest part of this video it'll be about punch boosting there's not much to talk about so i'm just gonna go through it and what are its uses it's, it's kind of small but it is something you might want to add to your arsenal to again just be at the ready okay this is one of the more simpler movement techs um and i'll i'll get down to what makes it work and how you could use it possibly within a fight so the bad necessity of these inputs is you have to hold crouch hold back and melee anything that is higher than the level you're standing on and i'll show you the extreme of that um down there let's go over here uh, but it's just that. better to do it on a hill and you only have to hold back on the first melee you don't have to hold it back for the rest okay so it'll look something like this and you'll just keep punching as soon as you hit the ground um you can keep punching and it'll get you down hills faster but um, I think the smallest example of this would be this right here. I'm clearly on a lower level and I'm going to punch this low, this uh, height that is right above me. Barely. Just anything I'm standing on. Anything higher than it. Hold back. Melee. And it'll force that slide. You don't have to be on a hill. And you don't have to already be on it and slide off it. Some people thought that was a requirement but it's not it's anything that you melee above the level that you're standing on so that's the extreme and the extent that you can do a punch boost and this one you kind of have to get creative on especially in a close quarters fight 
but um let, let's say you're finding uh oh crap i need to get away get to some cover it's great for that but if let's say he's around a corner and you really want to just add some flair i even got to the other corner cool but um so what i did is after i meleeed and i did a jump and a tap strafe i jumped tap strafe okay and that's so you could pick your direction after the slide so it's pretty much just added flare um it's not something you need it's not essential but it as everything else in this in this video it's the tools in your toolkit to abracadabra the bullets out of your face okay sorry to interrupt i just needed to intercept this literally right after i got done recording the next day technically just a couple hours after uh Moki sniper came up with another video on punch boosting um just showing more things it can and can't work on situations things that were just interesting about it in general it's more useful than i thought but it's still not something i see as super necessary but it's really good style point so link in the description for that but uh yeah just know that uh, that's there right after okay so next up is zip lines okay zip lines specifically and not grapples because um that is a pathfinder specific technique uh just like octane his stem but his stem is just added to everything else along with race portal but pathfinder is a whole different movement game and so he's not going to be taught about in this video because he's, it's not an all-encompassing movement for everybody and there's nothing to really mess up moki sniper describes perfectly how to perfect your zip line your your, your your grapple game so um i'll link in the description that video for you guys okay so before we go any further there are two other zip line techniques that i'm not going to be teaching in this one mainly because um they're just not super essential and i don't use them myself on top of that so uh, i will link those if you want to find out those uh in the description yet another moki sniper video uh i don't think i can explain it any better since i don't use it myself now the thing about all zip lines is you can only reconnect twice so after i am connected you have one two and you can't do it again until um you hit the floor the only exception to that rule would be on this vertical if you are falling down and you're you're not grappled onto the zip itself um you can reconnect um it, it pushes me way too far on the zip line specifically but if you're falling you can reconnect a couple more times um go back up fall again connect again you can pretty much do it as long as you're not staying connected to the zip line um and give it some time you can reconnect that's the only exception to the rule but horizontally um because you have to stay on it at all times you're not falling back onto it um you can only do it twice which really sucks when if you're being shot at the next part to this is super super jumping or zip line jumping okay so the the inputs to do that is as soon as you um connect yourself um you have to disconnect not as fast as possible but pretty much as soon as you connect to it um you do you use your scroll wheel uh i would suggest a long stride that way you can really get that height and not mess up now without um doing anything it'll just take you forward which is good if you're trying to get some distance uh and trying to run away now the thing about that when you do it on a horizontal it'll go straight up and barely forward at all you'll barely go forward now you have to know that if you're trying to run away and there's a zip line going horizontal you can't really run away effectively if you're trying to gain distance so this is uh these horizontal super jumps or or zip line jumps are 
something a pro might do to just get on a roof like 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 or like poke on the top of a roof i should say so ooh, ooh. Bra. Bra. they do that just so they don't have to uh, physically get on there and they can just poke oh it's very it's, it's kind of smart in that way that's a good example how to make your super jump uh on the zips your, your zip jumping um experience more enjoyable and more and you having more control and something a lot of pros do you'll see a lot of fade and lyric doing it a lot of movement players is they'll do one of two things fade likes to just um in to reconnect on the second after the super jump after this the zip line jump is he'll just um look back at it or tap strafe back so he'll he'll tap strafe back onto it so he could basically do a zigzag he used to be able to do it uh, a lot when there wasn't a limit on how many times you can reconnect but um it's still useful and whatever way you end up facing when disconnecting is the direction you're going to be take taking primarily yeah i could tap drive in another direction all i want it's not going to be super effective so just keep that in mind when you're dismounting uh, one trick that I like uh, using, and this is uh, the only bad thing about it is uh, if someone is looking down at the zip, they're uh, looking straight down, uh, they're, they're going to laser you. So if you know you're alone or if, you, if you're comfortable, or if you just want to get up somewhere fast, what you do is you super jump and to keep the rope in front of you, you hold S, you hold, a, you hold back a little and you can reconnect again and dismount however you like. So holding back just keeps it closer to you so you can reconnect a lot easier than trying to oh no i gotta look back at tap strafe which is not it's not a big deal but it, it, it is something you might want to note so another thing that um you'll see a lot of pros do is uh, especially on this bottom floor they do it on other floors but that's easiest to do on bottom floor is those super jump or zip jump like up and they'll look back they're basically just essentially getting away from the fight and still being engaged and when they drop back down um they they'll do what is called a zip dismount which all it is is hitting crouch um in order to disconnect but it doesn't bring you back up it doesn't jerk you back up or force you down because there there is a zip and a thing for dropping you back down it's not super useful and you should never do it zipping down is never useful at all ever but um the only thing you really want to do if you ever are trying to fall down is fall as close as you can to it and connect to it near the end of it and use crouch to dismount just to practice uh, in general you can just fall off here and time it so with that example that i did with the that i was mentioning with the pros where they're, they're engaging to disengage they'll go up the zip a little bit um and when they come back down they're gonna dismount and come right back to the fight and like i said it's easiest on the bottom but they do do it on other floors it's a lot harder to do uh timing wise so that's something you're really gonna have to practice in game <clears throat> but it, you can also practice here so just to re reiterate um I use the holding back method just to get up faster. But if you know you're going to get in a fight or you know someone's in a building, just do the straight or tap strafe. Just kind of just go straight for it. Uh, it's just best to do it that way. Just so you don't get shot at. Okay, so this last zip line trick is um, map specific. I've noticed that um, the roof will be connected with the zip line uh, going elsewhere. So what you can do to get on this uh, pretend roof is do a 180 degree tap strafe like we did with those walls down there. 
uh, where you don't use the A, S, and D movement. Uh, you'll just use your mouse 180 degree and long stride um, to get on the roof after the super jump or the zip jump. You can either climb on it or you'll go over it. Either way is good. So now uh, we're going to be going and diving into jump pads. Okay, so it might seem a little simple at first, but there are harder parts to it. And one you don't necessarily need. It's just best to do. If you can do the very last one I'm going to teach you, if you can do it consistently, it can really up your game in how fast you can be doing a tech, uh, pretty much any direction, period. It's the most optimal you can use a jump pad. So to start off with jump pads, um, there's two different kinds. There's the standing and then there's this crouch. The crouch is also a slide too. Is with a standing, you'll go higher, but not farther. And of course, you have your double jump as well. So it'll hit about right here. And crouch is farther, but not higher. And I don't even know if I'll reach the top of that. Oh, yes, I will. And added with a slide, you can go even farther. Now there are purposes for using the, the standing one over the crouched because most people are using crouch like all the time to chase people. Let's say you're going up a hill. You don't want to use a crouched one because you're just going to hit the, the ground a lot sooner. Uh, overall buildings, whatnot. So uh, just don't always use crouch. Okay. so. When you want to add a tap strafe into your jump pad, essentially what you want to do is just use your double jump and right after you look in the direction you want and tap strafe. Now there's a key thing that a lot of people don't like to mention a whole lot is when you finally pick out the decision of where to go, you can look around all you want. Um, but you want to fix yourself back to the, the direction that the jump pad took you jump and then tap strafe uh, it can kill your momentum as uh, except for anything in between the 90 degree angle uh, area so perfect 90 degree right and a perfect 90 degree left are totally fine to do and everything in between in front of you if you, uh, if you want to do anything more than 90 degrees you need to do the transfix look over and I'll demonstrate I'm gonna take a perfect right Totally fine. And you'll notice anything in between is perfectly fine to tap strafe towards. I don't need to fix my location back in my direction. But let's say I want to do more than a 90 degree angle. What I want to do, and I will add an A or D movement, maybe an S movement, is I can look around, blah, 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 look in the direction I want, and then I'll use A turning left and tap strafe now watch what i do if i don't do that i'll look over here jump tap strafe and i lose all my momentum the only thing that gained my momentum back was Let's landing over, yeah. here and sliding Oops, never mind. so it's ultimately ruined um after that so adding that fixed location will get you back um, the momentum you would have had trying to do it now, this is essential when you want to do a 180 degree jump back onto your jump pad. You can bunny hop back to it if you didn't get enough room. Uh, but you can keep going back and forth on here. The hardest part about doing it back and forth like this is doing the um, timing for your mouse and long long scroll wheel like usual okay and if you're still having trouble doing the 180 degree uh double jump back onto the jump pad you might be doing what i did and this is something that really frustrated me to a very small flaw uh there's no way he would have known this uh but i use my jump my scroll wheel jump way more than my space bar uh, and that's it works fine if you're not doing a 180 everything is fine but i got so used to doing it that when i try to do the 180 even with the a and d movement it just didn't work 
See, it still cuts me off. And I couldn't for the life of me understand why. Uh, and the reason for that being is all of these jump inputs are ruining my my way back so as soon as i'm like hmm, maybe i should use my space bar jump everything worked fine my 180 degree turns were fine everything was so much smoother everything was fine and there's no way he would have known but it's just the little things that could be ruining your movement. So if anyone had that problem, or if I was just alone in that problem, there's the solution. Use your space bar to jump, not your scroll wheel, no matter how comfortable that is. So on to picking your direction from any point on this. Instead of saying, oh, I wanna jump over there. Let me run on the other side of here real quick. Instead of doing that, what you can do is you can melee and pick a direction if it'll let me and that's the standing one by the way you can do a crouched one so all you need to do is pick either standing or crouched you'll hit it pick the direction and you're good There's a little bit of timing involved and of course you can add your tap strafe while uh your tap strafe double jumps Oh yeah, you can pick your direction, blah, blah, blah. Do all the things you want. You can even go sideways with it. What most people know about meleeing is if you don't move at all and you melee, you go straight up. This is great if you want to see people above you. It's not so great if you don't want to get lasered. But um, let's say you there's a really tall building and you want to get on top. You can melee, double jump, tap straight that in that direction. Kind of inch towards it. So that's really essential. So now comes the really juicy stuff. This is how you can pick your direction without a melee and not waste your double jump. But some people waste the double jump to pick the direction directly behind them. So instead of doing any of that at all, to save you all the trouble, all you need to do is crouch. Preferably you can slide. I like to slide into it. it makes it so much easier. And what you want to do is quickly and this uh, i mean quickly jump give it a little bit of time to sit your your butt here jump pick the direction and tap strafe in that direction all at once so the ones that are all at the same time is direction look and tap strafe give you but a little bit of time to sit on it that's about the only hardest part obviously the mouse movement tap strafe part like always but really it's just the timing of how long do you want your butt to sit on it a good example is oh no someone's chasing me oh and then you jump over them and they can't follow and you still have your double jump by the way you could go way over there instead and all they're forced to do is oh over there yeah they could tap straight this way but the, you're still long gone because you still have your second jump my dude it's just super optimal to do that rather than oh let me crouch over here real quick pick my direction jump cool it's it's something you really want to do if you want to map to really master the jump pad i i i i request that you do this regardless of being an octane main because if you really hate octane mains or if you want to dive in to an enemy or chase down that octane that thinks they're all that you need to know this because more often than not the octane main has the advantage both with their stem and them possibly knowing this this tech that i'm that i'm teaching but if you're on their tail and you have the better aim the better everything just they can't do anything they have no reason to not die by your hands if you have the exact same move in your arsenal you can be very well equipped with with that last one it is by far one of the most useful jump tricks you can have on a jump pad so a very good tool um to have is when you have your jump pad ah, 
Uh, let's seeds. say this is a, like the bridge uh, in Fragment. You want to do that 180 de degree um, tap strafe after that uh, wall, after that uh, second jump to get on the top. Or let's say uh, it's not here, but it's on like this is a building. Like this other half is a building, and you're like, oh, okay. Well, I want to get over. Here. I want to get to the roof. I don't want to take the stairs. It's so boring to take the stairs. I'm gonna. I want to get on the top of the building this way that 180 degree uh secondary jump on the jump pad isn't just to get back on it it could even be to be you know juke your enemy be like choo -choo -choo -choo, and then tap straight towards them so and can, and can just continue to shoot this is going to be the last part of this video and it is going to be the hardest and this is going to take some time another good reason why i think i'd be a better teacher than maybe wrecked or lyric is because they're so good at it uh literally wrecked mastered it within an hour he said within an hour or two maybe i think he said just an one hour maybe 30 minutes so i <laughs> i don't know how to take that yeah i suck at movement but i i work my ass off just to even get closer so um with that in mind i just some little tricks uh physically that you might be be able to do um in order to make it easier maybe some mental things that can make it easier to do uh but first off i'm, I'm just going to show you how uh to do it on input okay so the basic input is after the climb like there's the hardest part about this is timing it on the climb the other inputs aren't the hardest part that you can get down super easy it's the timing it's knowing when you need to soup that was a super light that just just so you know what it looks like it's the timing of the climb animation now for me sometimes uh in, in, in the very beginning of learning Someone mentioned the moving of the middle middle dot here on the, in the on the screen Some people can't notice it, but if you if you can notice the little things you should be able to know that it stopped moving And you can just super glad and do the input So you gotta that's the timing problem That's what makes this so hard. So that climb animation so after the climb what you want to do is hit space and then crouch a lot of people love to say hit it at the same time the only reason why they say that is so you don't stress about the timing of the of those inputs specifically now i'm only saying it, it has to be this way is because that's how you gain consistency so the input is technically jump and then crouch but they're so close together it feels like you're doing it at the same time so just know that just keep that somewhere in there don't stress about it too much just know that they they do have to be so they, they have to be so close together but the hardest part is knowing when to press it after the climb animation the absolute best advice i could give you about getting your consistency up with super gliding is to just keep doing it you may question yourself why is it so easy to do in the firing range and not in game um that could be little things like here like this never changes but there's just so many places you can do it on a map that you're it's just a little just tiny bit trickier so just keep doing it the more you do it the easier it'll get especially with your timing on on the climb and overall it'll become muscle memory you don't even have to think about it okay so one trick that may help you if it doesn't don't do it but if you feel like it, it will um go ahead and try this there are two things you could do physically that might be able to help uh one of which is the keyboard angle this is uh, too much of a right degree angle with my elbow. 
uh, so my wrist is a little bit more uncomfortable um, it's different for me since I have a one-handed keyboard so I put it at a slight angle and it makes it way more comfortable some people like it this way but I see some health risks and essentially what that does is it makes it easier for my thumb to press faster than my pinky for that crouch that I mentioned earlier so jump and then crouch it essentially makes one finger uh, faster than the other with the way that it's angled the second one is raising them up like more than you would and slamming it down so raising them up gives it a bit of a time delay like a, a physical time delay not just a mental one because you could be like oh like super antsy oh up. and you might be too fast at it so if you need to slow it down like i keep saying if you want to if you want to get consistent is you'll have it more raised up here for me i mean that's that's exaggerating but you know you get the point so just Uh, and you just you just emphasize the the keys so continuing the super glide um there is another way to super glide and it is doing a it is adding a sideways input and with that it looks like that exactly i added a a input a left input to go left um it is a lot trickier than just the regular one is it you gotta time this you have to already kind of be hitting left and then the combination of that so the nice thing about it is once you're up you can already be pressing a or d you can already be pressing those inputs the only problem is consistency is way lower on it um, if you don't practice it enough with that in mind adding a side input um, it there are its uses uh, especially uh, especially with um, adding tap strafe to it which you can do with just a regular um super jump which i'll show here in a sec let's say i'll be jumping this way and then i go towards the dummy it's less predictable than just jumping straight at them and you can do the same way pretty much anywhere see that was that was way more narrow makes it more unpredictable which is always good and because it's super fast it throws them off guard and there is a 180 degree like as usual but you have to add a dsa or asd and you do tap straight like let like left or right first before doing that because it can really ruin it if you don't because there's not enough force in that direction to start the momentum shift see how it cut me off a little bit uh with that first tap strafe it gives me the momentum i need to do the rest of it so it kind of throws me backwards and of course you can do the 180 degree direct approach which you add just an a to go farther or d yes even to a sideways one which is actually super flashy you can add a, a super a sideways super glide tap strafe like that it's super fancy i prefer just doing the straightforward one but um it, it's i don't it, it's it's something and i don't i don't believe you shouldn't practice it i still think you should and just so everyone knows um the farthest you can get with a super glide is with a race into the void and portal and a close second would be octane's um stem and of course bangalore can but only if she's shot at nearly so uh it's not reliable or anything and of course bloodhounds um ultimate does that too but again you're using an ultimate not super useful so for a wraith and octane it's super useful super super useful and they go the farthest okay so that was a regular super glide and that was a 
stem super glide almost to the end of this that's regular with wraith phasing okay and that is a race one so there's a little bit of um gap here between where she is and where octane's stem was but that little bit of gap could get you in a lot of places so yeah octane is a close second and just as a little tip here uh a little bit of nugget of information if you uh want to super glide but you play a lot of people just know that it's going to be a lot harder for you because um if you're going from tall person short person even shorter with race race and octane you you can learn it but you have to understand the climbing takes longer for race than it does octane and you know all the different all of the different heights have a different timing okay that was the end of this part uh this was the tutorial half of the movement stuff uh, i'm going to be posting the second part um which is linked everywhere is the practice that is going to be able to give you that consistency over and over and it works as a perfect warm-up once you've perfected everything you can still use it uh that way you're not so sloppy in your first couple games um and please like comment share and subscribe comment if this video really helped you or if uh you're if you sent it to some some other friend um i've i haven't really put this much effort in in many of my videos i try my best for editing my highlights but this is more thought out this is supposed to be tutorial there's more effort into it i uh, made a whole script i made sure that i covered everything i possibly could um and yeah i thought i'd throw myself into the ring uh since i thought i could teach better than maybe some pros uh explanation of that in the beginning of the video not an ego i just honestly feel like uh others might have the same problems that i did so um i shared my experiences along uh with teaching others so yeah please tell me what you guys think um i make highlight videos from my twitch so if you're looking for good movement videos or, or just content in general go subscribe here on youtube and follow me on twitch right now i'm a demigod movement player but um uh i'll eventually get there i'll eventually be a god uh, of movement here in apex so look forward for that journey just so you guys don't think uh it's an ego thing i really put so much effort into me training and practicing to get this good at at this kind of movement uh the reason why i call i'm calling myself a demigod uh rather than a god of movement is because I, I know i'm not there yet but i'm going to be i, I just need I, I have the confidence to uh i'm not going to put myself down just because others don't understand that uh i worked hard for it okay it, it didn't just come from me uh i had so much effort tr just trying to learn it in general uh and perfect it but um i won't consider myself a god of movement until i've either impressed a movement god killed a movement god with movement not just good aim whether i followed them even with doing all their movement and and all that or if everyone acknowledges that i am one regardless of the other two or all three you know make it a checkbox da, da, da. do all three that'd be nice but until then i'm a movement demigod Zai hakai hope you liked the video peace bloopers my g and just in case i don't like that i'm going to re say it <laughs> this is take two just in case and not just input me okay you know what that's not a good explanation start over maybe i shouldn't be wearing a tank top in a video i'm trying to look professional in <laughs> Eesh. <sighs> okay but until then i'm a movie <laughs>